for what seems like an error, an island measuring less than one-third of one square mile. Amidst a luxurious British colonial settlement was the site of the brutalization of thousands of prisoners and political convicts. Today, the jungle has reclaimed the land of Ross Island. Some 800 miles away from the coast of mainland India, this island in the Indian Ocean is now enveloped in unnerving anguish and overgrown vegetation. After the Indian Rebellion, also known as the Sepoy Mutiny of 1857, considered to be the first war of eventual Indian independence, British colonists immediately sought to establish a faraway penal settlement on the Andaman Islands to subdue the rebels. British doctor James Patterson Walker established the penal colony while in the company of 200 convicts and rebels in March 1858. Ross Island, the smallest of the 576 islands that form the archipelago was chosen as the colony's administrative headquarters as its strategic location provided safety from attackers. Thus began an era of unprecedented penal cruelty on Indian soil. For years, the inmates were forced to clear the island's dense, humid forests to make way for a lavish colonial complex, including a luxurious commissioner's bungalow, with carved gables and shaded verandas, to a Presbyterian church fitted with stained glass window panels from Italy. For entertainment, manicured gardens, tennis courts and swimming pools were constructed. In fact, no expense was spared in making Ross a comfortable haven. But the inmates lived in an ever-present threat of diseases like malaria, cholera, dysentery. The British even conducted illicit medicinal trials to treat malaria with an experimental drug. Thousands of convicts were force-fed Cincona alkaloid, an unprocessed drug that would later be distilled into quinine, imparting severe side effects that include nausea and depression. Interestingly, quinine is still used to treat malaria today. Over the years, convicts were sent to the island in hordes, packed close in makeshift barracks with leaking roofs. Inmates were overworked, disease-ridden and emaciated. In early 20th century, the Indian struggle for independence intensified and led to the construction of the notorious cellular jail at nearby Port Blair a tentative UNESCO World Heritage Site today due to its disreputable role. For several decades, this prison oversaw unspeakable atrocities committed against Indian freedom fighters and political prisoners until its eventual closure in 1937. The turbulent history of the islands did not end there. In 1941, just a few years after the closure, a magnitude 8.1 earthquake struck the islands causing more than 3,000 deaths and damaging numerous buildings.
A year later, Japanese forces made their way towards Andaman and Nicobar Islands and occupied and plundered the Ross Island for raw material and vandalized to build bunkers. Allied forces recaptured the islands in 1945 and today it is administrated by the Indian government. Though the rest of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands were eventually reoccupied in subsequent decades, Ross Island's community dissolved. Today, nature has reclaimed most of the land and the island exists as a tourist attraction. A short ferry trip from Port Blair. Shrouding in foliage its gruesome past, giant knots of fiscus tree roots conceal the ruins of magnificent bungalows. But concealed just under the veneer of the island's nostalgic allure is the forgotten story of decades of colonial oppression. <laughs>